Hey, what's up? Pete's Loving Nerd here. Today, we will be looking at the new version of Elementary OS, also known as 5.1, also known as Hera. So, anyways, basically all this release added was this new wallpaper. Alright, so, uh, Elementary OS is a great distro. Uh, I don't typically recommend it because it's not for me and there's a lot of weird stuff like a lack of a minimize button or lack of system indicators. I guess GNOME has that too, but still. And it can be really annoying to try and get some of that stuff set up. But once you do get it set up, it is a great experience and it's very good. Anyway, so what are some of the new features this adds? Well, uh, it adds this beautiful wallpaper. I already made this joke. It also adds this new greeter, so uh, the reason I'm not showing it is because I'd have to log out to show it and I can't record while I log out. But basically this greeter uh, shows your users based on the desktop and the profile picture. So it is very cool looking and very nice looking and I like how it shows the wallpaper because then you can see sort of without needing to read the name or look at the profile picture, you can automatically tell, oh, that's my uh, setup, and that's how you know that's your user. There's also a new onboarding app that launches when you install, not to be confused with onboard, the on-screen keyboard. When you launch elementary for the first time, it gives you this welcome to elementary thing, uh, and it helps you set it up. So you start with your location services, you can enable or disable nightlight, you can enable or disable housekeeping, which basically helps clean out elementary in its files. Uh, it gives you a link to the app center so you can get some apps. And then when you're done, you can open up system settings or just get started. So this will make getting into elementary very easy for a new user, whether they're a Linux user or they haven't used Linux before. Our next feature is called Sideload. Now what this does is it basically lets you install flat packs. So the way you would do it is you'd go onto FlatHub and you download a uh, flat pack you want to run. I'm gonna do Lollipop Music Player just because uh, that's usually the first thing I that's usually one of the only things I install for FlatHub because I like its newer version that Ubuntu doesn't have. So you go to install and you get the dot flat pack ref file and you click on it and you install it as if it's a dot dev file and it will go install untrusted app and uh, then it will give you some info, so it will show you the download size, it will tell you the updates to this app will not be reviewed, and uh, other apps from this distributor may appear in the software center. So, uh, I do feel like it actually has been reviewed for security, privacy, by the FlatHub uh, team, the maintainers if you will, so I feel like it should just talk about system integration, because security and privacy usually is reviewed. So I feel like this is a little bit over the top scary for this warning, but it's okay. It's still like how it's there because yeah. So I do like how it doesn't show FlatHub stuff in the software center out of the box because uh, it would, uh, people might get confused between regular uh, app center apps and FlatHub apps. So I do think that is a good change to not show them out of the box. However, I do think that even if you don't install something from FlatHub, there should be like a check or something in uh, the software center or the app center in order to enable FlatHub. Another change is that Elementary OS basically uh, did a lot of improvements on the software center and it's actually usable now. Like, I mean, I guess it was usable before as the Elementary OS software center was pretty much one of the only Debian-based software centers I'd actually use, that in the Mint Software Center. But like, now, this like, it- I haven't had any times where I've tried to install something with this and it didn't work. Like, the new- the Software Center now works so well. It- everything always installs, I never have to cancel the software installation and use a terminal instead. It's super fast, fluent, and everything just works super well. Another change is they made a bunch of improvements in settings, so they improved the sound settings, uh, improved the mouse uh, and trackpad settings right here. There's new desktop settings, they redesigned that. There are better display settings, uh, they 
changed up some of the Bluetooth settings with a new pairing agent for pins and passkeys. They refined the date and time settings. They improved the language and region settings that makes it easier to install different languages. They also redesigned the VPN and uh, hotspot settings. They reworked the housekeeping settings. And they added a new prop to shut down option inside of the power settings. As well as made it so you can access settings through the application menu search. The Elementary OS Calendar app has been redesigned with better keyboard shortcuts, a better color power, and things like that. The camera app has been improved with more compatibility for different cameras, including on laptops such as Dell laptops. The Photos app now displays a checkerboard pattern for transparent photos, as shown here, as well as better dialogues inside of the Photos app. The music app was changed a little bit. There's improvements to sorting the album, list, and column views. They also made keyboard shortcuts more discoverable, according to the blog, the elementary blog, although I'm not really sure how they did that. Uh, there's a new bold orange accent color uh, throughout the program, carrying from the icon to the app itself. There, It can now play S3M files and Double clicking an album cover in the grid view will automatically start playing that album. The videos app now automatically use episodes when watching shows. It has also been updated to show audio track titles with the language name. Uh, keyboard navigation has been improved and it's now easier to clear a playlist queue with a dedicated button. The files app has gotten support for cloud providers such as Nextcloud. There is also better keyboard shortcut discovery, so if I hover over something like the trash, it will show uh, a keyboard shortcut, Alt and T. Search results is also larger and now shows more results when you search for something, so I'm just going to search for, I don't know, Flatpak. Here we go. Cherry picking files has been greatly improved, uh, and now if you right click, it now shows all of the color tags in the context menu. Images that are transparent also have a checkerboard pattern in them, just like the Photos app. And there's several performance and stability improvements with the Files app. Elementary Code has more discoverable keyboard shortcuts, just like Elementary uh, Music and Files. They added back the Line Warp uh, Wrap setting, I said Warp. And there is now a Change Grants functionality for Git projects, as well as displaying hidden and non-text files in the sidebar, Make Git management more accurately reflect the state of the repository. Elementary OS's terminal has been improved. For example, that weird menu key on your keyboard that you never use. That now works inside of the elementary terminal. There's also improved contrast with the dark style. Middle quick paste is now more reliably in sync with the system wide setting. The context menu now shows keyboard shortcuts and better delineation between text actions and app actions. Some of the indicators have been improved, such as the time and date indicator, as well as the power indicator when you have multiple users uh, on your computer. There are some new wallpapers. This is a new default wallpaper, and there's also three other new wallpapers. I like this one a lot. There are a bunch of new improvements under the hood, such as kernel 5.0, uh, and the LTS hardware enablement stack from Canonical, which will give you better support on recent processors, GPUs, and other hardware devices. And you can get all of these new features except for the hardware enablement stack if you are already on Juno just by running sudo apt update or updating through the app center. In order to get the hardware enablement stack though, you actually have to run this command, unfortunately. But everything else will be coming to Juno through an update now, so epic. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to be making more videos on elementary OS in the future, so stay tuned for those, and I'll see you in the next one.